Very few movies are ever truly broken by a single terrible moment, but sometimes a scene will prove to be so objectionable as to either hammer the final nail into the coffin or just spontaneously combust the thing altogether. Yes, just as Bart Simpson could pinpoint the precise moment that Ralph Wiggum's heart ripped in half, we too can nail down the exact second that these 10 movies all firebombed any remaining interest you may have had in watching them. I'm Ewan, you're watching What Culture, and here are the 10 exact moments movies self-destructed. Number 10. The Beach Danny Boyle's The Beach is a pretty flawed movie and not a particularly good adaptation of Alex Garland's novel, but it well and truly loses itself at the end of the second act when protagonist Richard, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, finds himself being pursued through the jungle by Thai farmers. This might sound like the sort of taut set piece that Danny Boyle could knock out in his sleep, but Boyle decided instead to get real weird with it, and not good weird. Suddenly, Richard imagines himself in a low poly video game, running through the jungle complete with a herd containing lives and points, while he attempts to avoid awful CGI animals. Though the intent was clearly to show Richard's declining mental state, the end result is ultimately more goofy than unsettling largely due to the horrible effects and Leonardo DiCaprio's exaggerated movements and facial expressions. It feels embarrassingly like what somebody who's never played a video game in their life thinks that video games are, and though games are also mentioned by Richard in the novel, this nevertheless smacks of how do you do fellow kids syndrome. Number 9. The Death of John Connor – Terminator Dark Fate Few films have managed to terminate themselves quicker than Terminator Dark Fate, which opened with a prologue sequence set three years after the events of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. In the scene, young resistance leader John Connor, a de-aged Edward Furlong, is suddenly gunned down by one of the many, many T-800 Terminators sent back in time by Skynet to kill him, all while his mother Sarah helplessly watches on. This wasn't just a cruel twist which added little to the movie beyond cynical shock value. It actively undermined James Cameron's T2 Judgment Day, one of the finest action films ever made. Dark Fate, whether intentionally or not, trivialized Connor's place in the franchise, or it would have if not for the fact that it bombed at the box office, ensuring that it would receive no further sequels. Yeah, between Genesis and this, can we just put a stop to Terminator now? Unless Cameron gets behind the director's chair again, I don't see much point in flogging this dead metallic skeleton any longer. Number 8. Do you think, cuz, Texas Chainsaw 3D? Texas Chainsaw 3D never rises above being a bad movie, but this line, this line is kind of art. Do you think, cuz, absolutely exceptional. It's still a bad explosion, but it's one of those you can look back at and think, ooh, those are some pretty colors. At the very end of the film, protagonist Heather, played by Alexandra Daddario, decides she's had enough of the corrupt authorities terrorizing Leatherface, Dan Yeager, who she recently learned is her cousin. And so, when facing off against the malevolent mayor, Bert Hartman, Heather picks up Leatherface's chainsaw and throws it towards him, before dropping the now infamous zinger, Do you think, cuz? It's like we're prepping Leatherface for a slasher villain dance-off, which I would also absolutely watch the hell out of. You just know the guy from I Know What You Did Last Summer is packing some serious heat. But regardless of my own chaotic preferences, this is a moment that felt corny and out of step with the rest of the movie, which wasn't great to begin with either. Number 7. Alan's Nightmare – Jurassic Park 3 Jurassic Park 3 at least had the good courtesy to let everybody know it was going to be an impossible to take seriously farce in the early going, when Dr. Alan Grant, Sam Neill, takes a nap during the flight to Isla Sauna and has an infamous nightmare. Grant appears to wake up and find the plane empty with no pilots flying it, and upon looking to his left, he's greeted by a raptor which appears to speak to him, its mouth moving as a human voice says, Alan. Alan then wakes up for real, with the voice having actually belonged to his assistant Billy, who was trying to wake him up as they approach the island for real. To be clear, the scene's absolutely hilarious, but in a film that wants you to buy into the dead seriousness of its life or death stakes, it's completely out of place and sinks the movie long before Grant even touches down on the island. Although I will say there are fun bits to come, like the Spinosaurus chase and the aviary sequence. 
Just, yeah, not the best claw forward. Or, or is it? Dinosaur Billy is a great image. Number six, Martha, save Martha. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice certainly had its fair share of problems leading up to that epic mid-film fight between Batman and Superman, but it was surely worth sitting through all the convoluted writing and tedious subplots for the titular epic showdown. Right? Right? Though the fight's pretty fun for a few minutes, it's over before it's ready to be, and more to the point, it slams into a brick wall in the most jaw-droppingly dumb, anticlimactic manner possible. Just as Batman grabs a kryptonite spear and is ready to finish the job, Superman shouts, SAVE MARTHA! Referring, of course, to his mother. Given that Bruce Wayne's mother is also named Martha, this initially confuses him, and once Lois Lane explains the situation, forces Bruce to realize that Superman isn't quite the anonymous alien interloper he dismissed him as. Like him, he had a mother. Get it? The psychology of the idea isn't all bad, but the execution? Oh boy, it's really bad. Soup screaming out for Martha just kind of feels like a clumsy contrivance. The least BVS could have done would have been to have this happen way earlier to give us more of Batman and Superman actually working together, because they're superheroes, and it's way more interesting having them work together than fighting each other. Number five, Bond goes surfing. Die another day. Oh, die another day. He started so well. Pierce Brosnan's final outing as 007 goes downhill pretty sharpish once its diverting pre-title sequence is out of the way, but there's one distinct moment at the start of the movie's third act that sends the outlandish spy actioner careering into unforgivable cartoon territory. We are, of course, talking about the infamous beat where Bond creates an improvised kite surfboard thing from the wreckage of his ice dragster and a parachute, allowing him to ride a gigantic tsunami wave generated by villain Gustav Graves' solar laser Icarus. The resulting sequence is simply too ridiculous to accept as anything less than the Brosnan era of Bond movies imploding before our very eyes, an idea that's inherently absurd and made far worse by the retinous, scarringly awful VFX. This specific scene is actually often credited with pivoting the Daniel Craig era into more serious-minded territory, lest it outright become the very thing that's parodying it, an Austin Powers movie. Number 4. Mary's Death, The Godfather Part 3 Nobody's gonna sit here and claim that The Godfather Part 3 is up there with its two peerless predecessors, but despite being wildly over the top by comparison, it's a good movie for the most part. It all falls apart in the climax, however. The emotional crux of the movie, where Michael Corleone's daughter Mary is collateral damage in an attempt on his life. Mary is mortally wounded by a gunshot and soon enough dies in her father's hands, but the entire manner in which the scene is executed is unintentionally laughable. From the fact that Mary takes 20 whole seconds to realize she's been shot, to the campy way she falls down to her knees, her vapid, very Californian utterance of dad, and the slapstick manner in which she finally keels over, it's all absolutely impossible to take seriously. It's of course well known that director Francis Ford Coppola's daughter only took the role of Mary to replace Winona Ryder last minute, and her excruciating performance is often cited as the giant lead anchor around the movie's neck. Her performance and how it's staged ultimately tank the single most important scene in the movie, no matter how brilliant Pacino's work as the grieving father might be immediately afterwards. Number 3. Retconning the original movie, Scream 3 I think I've already mentioned this before on the channel, but there is a big disclaimer here anyway. I really bloody like Scream 3. Although lacking in chills compared to its predecessors, Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's third Scream movie is an entertaining neo-noir that dives into the insidious underbelly lying beneath Hollywood's varnished surface. It also has Patrick Warburton and Parker Posey giving maybe the best performance in the series as Jennifer Jolie. It's a fun time! Please give Scream 3 a chance! Okay, so now for the bad. As much as I like this one, there is no escaping that diabolical third act reveal, which retcons the events of the original movie and reveals that director Robin Bridger, the ghost face for the third outing, is actually Sydney's half-brother. Scream 3 goes one step further though, having Roman be the one responsible for setting off Billy Loomis and Stu Maker's murders in the first film, having shown footage of Sydney's mother with his dad. 
needlessly undercutting the original movie was never going to do Scream 3 any favors. And while the ending does leave Sydney in a nice place, the fact that it took an awkward retcon to get there does leave a cloud lingering behind. Number 2. The Opening Monologue Hellboy 2019 as much as I really like the Guillermo del Toro Hellboy movies, they aren't an accurate reflection of the Mike Mignola comics. Mignola's original Hellboy run was dark and mostly immersed in history. Del Toro's films tapped into some of those elements and are still really entertaining, but when a reboot was announced with the Descent director Neil Marshall attached, I was really optimistic. Sadly, despite showing flashes of its potential as a truly authentic adaptation of Mignola's comics, the Lobster Johnson flashback and Baba Yaga scenes especially, the 2019 Hellboy is a total train wreck. A tonally irreverent misfire that felt more like a reply to Deadpool and the MCU than a considered attempt at relaying the beauty of the original Dark Horse comics. This was made immediately apparent in the opening, which recaps the fate of Nimue with a narration from Ian McShane, who plays Professor Trevor Brutenhall. Things start off okay, until McShane starts swearing with Nimue's decapitation, and the tone shifts into zany unseriousness. This jarring tonal mishmash sadly foreshadowed the rest of the film all too accurately, with the remainder of the runtime being comprised of David Harbour yelling all his lines and random needle drops interrupting different action set pieces. Bad. And number one, The Footawacken Dance, Alice in Wonderland. Tim Burton's adaptation of Alice in Wonderland is an 108 minute sensory assault, but at least it's worth sitting through to see the Mad Hatter's much hyped foot of and dance, right? Well, not really. A running gag throughout the movie is that the Mad Hatter never does the joyous dance anymore, though he promises his friends that he'll do it again when the White Queen, Anne Hathaway, gets her crown back. That of course happens at the film's end, and after all that build-off, the Futawakan ends up being a nightmarish 22nd festival of limb contortion and the hat has had digitally spinning around, backed with cringe-making funky music. Yeah, not Burton or Danny Elfman's finest hour, it must be said. Beyond simply not living up to the hype, it's entirely indicative of everything wrong with Burton's Alice in Wonderland. A garish overload of VFX-driven style and way, way too much of Johnny Depp being weird for the sake of it. After an entire movie's worth of Burton's worst instincts as a filmmaker, this was just too much. And those were 10 exact moments movies self-destructed. Have any other moments where films lost you completely? Drop them down in the comments below, and while you're down there, if you could drop us a like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the vid, then that'd be swell too. Either way, I've been Ewan, I hope the Mad Hatter didn't scar you too much, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye!